How's it going there ladies and gentlemen? My name is Tommy, also known as Pyrotos. Welcome to the video. We're going to be taking a look at some of the older Pokemon returning to the Crown Tundra DLC for Pokemon Sword and Shield. And I want to show you some of the new additions to their movesets. You guys know me, I like the underappreciated Mons, so yes you can look at the top tier Mons like Celesteela, Kartana, Tapu Koko, whatever, all that sort of stuff. But I thought, let's show some love to the lower tier Mons, right? You got a couple of higher tier ones in there, you got a Garchomp for example, because I thought it's too good an opportunity to pass up on, there's no addition to this moveset. But, for the most part we're going to be focusing on the lower tier Mons. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to drop a like, I would appreciate that very much. It helps out my channel, and subscribe if you want to see more, we have plenty more Crown Tundra videos coming, lots of competitive content. Let's go ahead and start off with the first Mon, which is going to be Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl has always been a very good lead mon because it has great speed, it has access to Taunt, to Stealth Rock, to a pretty good attack stat with Stone Edge, Quake, that sort of stuff. But now it gets access to Dragon Dance. That makes it a viable sweeper because its attack stat has always been decent but never powerful enough to be a sweeper. And it got Home Claws but honestly I think the speed boost is important for if you're facing Choice Scarfers especially because otherwise you just get revenge kills straight away, right? And Aerodactyl doesn't get priority so... The best way to run it, in my opinion, as a sweeper, is going to be Dragon Dance. So we're running Dragon Dance Focus Sash. Arrow's frail, so it's nice to have that ability to take a hit. Dragon Dance Stone Edge. Dual Wing Beat is another new addition to this thing, which is very nice because previously you had to run Aerial Ace or Fly, which are not ideal. I don't even know if it gets Fly, it might just be Sky Drop, but either way, it doesn't get Brave Bird, doesn't get Drill Peck, so Wing Beat is definitely a way to go here. And then I figured Aqua Tail for. The ground type, so something like Rapiria, for example, you can definitely hit hard with that. So, nice addition to the moveset. Dragon Dance and Wing Beat. I think it definitely appreciates this and can put it forward as a decent sweeper. Next one we're going to take a look at, and a lot of people don't know this, but Absol is still my favourite Pokemon. I know I adopted Pangora as the mascot, but I really like Absol. Absol has always been a beautiful Pokemon, underappreciated in my opinion. Just kind of lacks the speed, you know, to be a higher tier threat. But one nice thing it did get this gen is close combat. Now it always got superpower, which is nice, but not ideal for a sweeping mon, because obviously you're lowering your attack stat. So now that you can run close combat, Sword Stance 3 attacks is looking like a pretty solid set. Close combat is very good for other dark types, obviously steel types as well. Absol still suffers in the lack of speed, but at least you've got that nice little buff in close combat. Next one we're going to take a look at is Archeops. Now a lot of people don't know this, but Archeops actually has a good special attack stat, believe it or not. Base 112 is very solid. So even though this is normally seen as a physical attacker, slash lead set, similar to Aerodactyl, you can now run Meteor Beam, which boosts your special attack. So Power Herb with Meteor Beam is a way to get off a very powerful hit in one turn, and also raise your Spatak. Now obviously you don't want to be going for Meteor Beam multiple times, because that means you have to take a hit, or predict their switch. But, now that you've got your boost, you can go for a nice plus one Air Slash. Air Slash is also new, that's a very nice addition to Archeops' move pool, given that it didn't have a decent special attack in flying move before. I think Air Cutter, but Air Slash is just that much better. Earth Power is very nice for Steel types, obviously, and Rock types. And Heat Wave's just kind of filler. You can run Focus Blast here if you like, or something else. It's not really a big deal. The main moves you want to run are the first three ones. Heat Wave's kind of nice for stuff like Bronzong though, or you know maybe a Celesteela if for some reason you're facing a Celesteela with an Archeops. But Meteor Beam and Air Slash, nice additions to the move pool. Definitely appreciated. Next Pokemon we're going to be taking a look at, and this is the one I was raving about on Twitter for all you guys who follow me on there, Meteor Beam Aurorus. And you're seeing a theme here with Meteor Beam, and that's because it is one of my favourite moves. Power Herb Meteor Beam, Rock Polish, Hyper Voice, Earth Power. Now Ice Ground is very good coverage, it hits a lot of stuff super effectively, Earth obviously deals with Fire and Steel types, whereas Ice can't. And then Meteor Beam is just a way of raising your Spatak once again. Aurorus gets Calm Mind, but you'd rather only set up for one turn with Rock Polish. Aurorus can take one hit, usually, right? Barring a Mach Punch or Bullet Punch, you can usually take a hit. Like a Giga Drain or a Scold or whatever, right? So you set up, then you kill them with Meteor Beam, you get your boost, and then you can hit stuff very hard with Hyper Voice and Earth Power. Very solid Mon, I can see it being very good in the lower tiers. Not necessarily in the higher tiers where you got stuff like Scissor. But, 
that's another matter entirely. This thing could be a big threat in the lower tiers. Mark my words, ladies and gents. Next Pokemon we're going to take a look at is Carbink. Carbink got a couple of nice buffs. Historically, it's always been used as either a screen setter or maybe a trick room setter. It's a fairly good mod at doing that. Lacks offensive presence, so I wouldn't really recommend a calm mindset, but it's doable if you want to try it. The route I'd recommend going here is Body Press with a screen set. Body Press is a very nice addition because Carbink actually has a very nice defensive stat. You can see it goes all the way up to 438, which means you're hitting pretty hard with this thing. The other route you can go is the Trick Room set. So Stealth Rock, Trick Room, whatever you like, Magic Coat maybe, and then Misty Explosion. It does already get Explosion, but Misty Explosion lets you hit on the special side and it stabs, so pretty nice addition. Lets you get off some damage before you die and obviously keep maximum Trick Room turns, which is very nice. Next one we're going to take a look at is Garchomp, and I'm aware that this thing will probably still be OU, but I thought I'd include it anyway. We're looking at a nice scale shot Garchomp, which is a very good addition to this moveset. So, Garchomp's always had good speed, base 102 is pretty nice. However, there are many things that still outspeed it, and obviously Choice Scarfers, especially when you consider the new additions like Regieleki and... Whatever else, all these ridiculously fast Pokemon. Pheromos has been let back into OU at the moment by Smogon. So, Scale Shot can definitely help out. So I figured Swords Dance here. Scale Shot to boost your speed. And it's a multi-hit move, which is obviously nice for breaking sashes, that sort of thing. Earthquake for your main way of dealing damage. And Fire Fang, which is very nice for stuff like Ferrothorn. Definitely a nice addition to the moveset. Will catch a lot of people off guard and enable some sweeps. We're going to take a look at the next six Pokemon now here, ladies and gents. Just a friendly reminder to drop a like on this video and subscribe if you want to see more as it helps my channel grow, helps me beat that cursed YouTube algorithm and helps people find my videos. So first up here, we're going to take a look at Guzzlord. Guzzlord has always been not so much of a used Pokemon. It lacks the speed, it lacks the defensive stats. However, one thing it can do is nice damage because it actually gets very good coverage. So I figured here, okay, Heat Crash is the new addition to the moveset, so Sub, Heat Crash, Crunch, Heavy Slam will hit most stuff. Heat Crash is very nice for, obviously, Steel types, gives you something for Grass types, and Guzzlord is really heavy, so for the most part, you'll be doing very good damage with that. Heat Crash is a move that does damage based on the weight difference between you and the opponent, so definitely a good addition to its move pool. Next one is Electivire, slash Magmortar, because they got the same update, which is Weather Ball. Now, I know Electivire is kind of a joke Pokemon, but I think it uses Weather Ball better than Magmortar. I think put this on a Hail Team and you get the Bolt Beam coverage, the fabled Thunderbolt, Weather Ball Ice coverage, which obviously hits most stuff for at least neutral damage. And then Flamethrower, because why not? Hits stuff like Ferrothorn and Scissor. So yeah, nice addition. If you want to run this on a Weather Team, so it could be Rain or Hail, I think it's a pretty cool addition. Next one we're going to be taking a look at is Uxie. Now Uxie and Mespri come under the same category here, I think they both get these new moves which are Stored Power and Encore, which are very nice moves to have. So a sub Calm Mind Stored Power Uxie will go very far. Uxie has good speed, so normally you can get it behind the sub, and also very good bulk, so breaking those subs is going to be very difficult for your opponent. You can get up a couple of Carmines and you'll be doing a hell of a lot of damage with your stored power. Shadow Ball is just filler. Honestly, it's there just to hit other Psychic types, but you can replace that with whatever you like, really. You could put Encore on there. You could put Giga Drain. Doesn't matter. Whatever takes your fancy. It's also worth noting that it gets Nasty Plot, so if you'd rather go for more Spatak boosts as opposed to a more balanced Spatak and Spadef, you can run Nasty Plot, and the same goes for Mesprey. Maybe a Nasty Plot set on this thing with a Psychic move, Shadow Ball, Giga Drain, something like that. It could work very well. Next Pokemon we're going to be taking a look at is Regigigas. This thing has always been cursed by its terrible ability, but now it has a couple of ways to alleviate that. It gets access to Protect, and it gets Rest now, which are very good moves to have for stalling turns, obviously. So just a sample set here, Rest, Sleep, Talk, Body Slam, and Quake. You can normally take hits fairly well with this thing, so you stall for a few turns to get rid of your slow start ability, which obviously halves your attack and speed for 5 turns, and then you can do some massive damage with Body Slam and Quake. Unfortunately, Return and Frustration are not in this game, so Body Slam, kind of the best you can do, but 
That's not too bad, you still got a very good attack stat. Next we're going to be taking a look at Spiritomb. Spiritomb's always been a pretty good choice bander. Unfortunately it lost access to Pursuit, which is no longer in the game. But, it gets a couple of new toys. So I figure we're going to run Shadow Sneak as usual, as you normally do on a Spiritomb. But it now gets access to Poltergeist, which is a very hard hitting physical ghost move. And Lash Out. Lash Out's not as good, but maybe it's quite nice if you predict an Intimidate for example. Or you could even swap out Lash Out for something like Will-O-Wisp or Memento even if you want to chain it up with something else to set up. But certainly Poltergeist, very nice addition. Makes for a very powerful choice band of Spiritomb set. And I think it's going to get some good usage. Final Pokemon we're going to take a look at ladies and gents. This is Tyrantrum, another one of my favourites. Tyrantrum and Aurorus obviously released at the same time. Very solid fossil Pokemon. Just kind of suffer from the lack of speed for the most part. Tyrantrum obviously gets access to Dragon Dance, which boosts your attack and the speed. And the new addition to this thing's moveset is Close Combat. It's not as good as the other Pokemon's buffs, because it did get Earthquake before, which covers a lot of stuff like Steel types. But Close Combat's nice. I mean, we've seen from Haxorus that a Dragon type of Close Combat can never be a bad thing, right? So I figure Dragon Dance, Close Combat, Outrage, and Head Smash on this set. Do some massive damage, and obviously the Lumberry there to avoid a Scold Burn, or a will o for example. But that pretty much covers it. I think Tyrantrum is going to be still a lower tier threat, but a threat nonetheless. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Let me know what new additions to the older ones you guys like the best. I know I've not covered all of them, I just picked 12 of my favourites. So let me know in the comments section if there's any good ones that I missed, or if you like any of these ones in particular, or if I just taught you something new. It's always nice to hear. Thank you all for watching, folks. I will see you all next time.